What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, <laughs> with at facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction. Just like old times. With your host, Comp, and... Tuna Sister. And today's uh, show is... Uh, it's the finale of Fear of the Walking Dead. The Good Man. The Good Man. Who's the good man in this show? Well, isn't that a guy in Dark Tower who kind of like is worked for Randall Flagg? I don't know anything about that book series. So, Fear the Walking Dead. Haha, I'm doing the opposite this week. This week was a very good episode, for me at least. Can you guess Look why? You. See? I'm glad you came around. I, I came knew it was around. coming. Yeah, I knew Just it was coming. I was, I was hoping. You, this is, I guess, a series where you have to put your time into it, but there was a lot of fucking time you had to put into this show. Um, <clears throat> uh, I was really jolted by this guy who, on, on our YouTube channel, I shouldn't say jolted, but he was like, he took the parts, you know how I was like looking away from the TV set from the last week's episode? So he was like, <laughs> okay. I wouldn't take, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, be so happy to be proud about not paying attention to a show having short attention span. I was like, oh lord. And I'm like, it's because I was bored and, you know, frustrated with the show. See how I'm upset? Uh, some, I got trolled. You are upset. He lost sleep over that comment, sir. I was uh, trolled. Sir, Very good, you sir. made him... Feel sad. Look at me! Look at me now! Now I'm bringing it up. Anyway, so this episode of the Wa- the Fear of the Walking Dead. How does it start out, Danny? It starts out actually. <laughs> Holy lord! That's a good almighty. question because I missed the first two minutes because I was making a cup of coffee and I ran in like in a panic. So you're gonna have to start it off. Actually, I don't remember how it started, but this episode <laughs> deals with. Look, uh, we have a short attention span once again. We really do. This episode deals with the I guess the breakout of uh the the salazar and clark slash manawa clan um yeah. as as well as i guess ortiz family there's a lot of people in this, uh, this show they're trying to get uh, get out of this um escalating well, guess, yeah, shit that's house starts out is like they're breaking and returning to their original plan which is to uh, go east was it east or at least you know initially it was east but then they end up going west because mm-hmm. they meet strand was that uh, the uh, black to- dude in, in the suit? To- always looking in colors. Uh, the desert, right? That's where they wanted to go to for some reason. Um, yeah. I, which I guess would be an all right idea, but I guess you know that that seems like it would have a severe time restraint with it. Like I think if you live in the well, desert, well, it, it would suck because it's like yeah, there wouldn't be zombies there because it's the desert, but there wouldn't be fucking food or water there either because it's a desert. Like you unless would die. they unless they meant like farmland kind of desert, like Arizona kind of desert area. But still, desert is I desert, guess. I guess. But yeah, they uh, uh, at the end they obviously go the opposite route. So this episode deals with um, uh, it cuts between these three areas with uh, Travis and company trying to get into the, the Superdome area. You know where that Superdome is? And yeah, um, they're they're trying to get there, and uh, they implement the stadium, which shows. Pre- oh, that's how it starts. It shows exactly. Those yeah. Shots of the stadium. Yeah. So which, uh, is, which was awesome. I love that scene. So That's apparently, good. yeah, I know. I love the way that the episode started. I mean, I couldn't believe that the power grid was already out like that. Like, I don't understand how the power grid was already out for the whole city, but it's it was a really haunting beginning to the episode where the whole, you know, the light system was gone uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, it starts out with, um, with uh, um, Jesus Christ, what's his name? Salazar. Getting, you know, opening up the... Uh, the Superdome, I guess that's that's yeah. more middle of the episode, but the whole plan is that Salazar opens up this whole uh, opens up the op- the door to the Superdome or this um, football stadium, and lets all these zombies out, and he just casually walks up to the army base. This is like towards the middle half, towards yeah, the end of the episode. When he first got out, I was like, "Where is he going?" Like I didn't really put it together in my brain, and then when he walks up, it was like so happy. That was like a great. That was yeah. So anybody who's complaining there's not enough zombies, like got like triple zombies in this episode yeah and the, yeah so, it was like a lot of zombies in this episode this, sh- this show is also i guess taking that route with the same way they did with um with rick and the walking dead is that they're making a good guy i guess swallow yeah. his pride and bash the shit out of people although rick was already a cop so he kind of had that moral justice in him already and um travis has this sort of other kind of morality because uh, we skipped talking about it last time but he was very 
um, vehement about his son not learning how to shoot guns because he's just not a gun guy. And then there was a, that scene last week where he could Well, Rick does that to Carl a little bit too. Like, he's trying to keep him like a little kid, but then eventually he gives in and makes him like, you know, a man. Right, so this uh, uh, this episode totally, you know, flips the script. I think, obviously, because I think it's all set up. The thing with The Walking Dead is that it always... Your character always becomes the opposite person at the end of the episode. There's no real, like, one character that has kind of stayed the same way. Maybe maybe Michonne has, but uh, Michonne... Yeah, she would be the closest, I would <laughs> say, actually. The thing is, Michonne and Daryl are already sort of Terminator characters, where they've come in that way. And they don't really change because they're Although sort they've, of... they've become nicer as it's gone on. Yeah, I guess they so. they were a lot more, like, mean and angry when it first started, like both of them. So Travis has started out as more of a peaceful guy who's against guns. And then what happens is that... Um, who's the kid? The the army guy, Andrew Adams? What does Andrew, Andrew Adams I do? I loved when he beat him up. That was great. He went the fucking Hulk on him. Yeah, Andrew Adams, uh, I would say rightfully so, was upset with uh, Salazar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? It's just funny, rightfully so. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, wouldn't yes. you think so? I agree he was right, rightfully so, because he was pissed off at him and, I guess, if you think about it, the daughter, because the daughter was using him. Although the daughter was sort of like, oh, let's not, let's not do it. You know, I was like, what? You, I thought you were using him the whole time. You know, she's so she full of shit. She wasn't using him like, you know, like he's a piece of meat. She just wanted her mom to be healthy. That's not like... Right, no, I understand. She, everybody's using each other for a reason, but I But understand. she cares about him. She just cares more about her mom not dying right obviously which makes which makes sense but he was uh he was rightfully upset by that <laughs> so uh, i'm not justifying what he does because he ends up shooting her i guess to piss off um yeah. uh salazar but you know if she died that would have been very upsetting for him and travis yeah for army guy he was a bad shot so maybe he did that on purpose i feel like he might come back i think um because he was beaten like unconscious to unconscious level and his face was like like hamburger meat um yeah but that was obviously the breaking point for Travis because he he had trusted him, you know, to let him go. I don't know how he followed them. I don't know how he got to where they were. I guess they must have well, found out. He knew what he they were doing. He told them where they were going. He right, said, right, right. you know, he picked his brain to find out how to break into this place. So the guy knew where they were going. Yeah, so he just wanted revenge. He could have just kind of drove off into the sunset, I guess he could have. But he decided to go the vengeful route and shoot Salazar's daughter. I think he shoots her in the arm or the shoulder. That's like the magic place everybody gets shot where they don't die in shows. See, if I was going to, like, if I wasn't going to kill somebody but I wanted to fuck up their life, I'd, like, shoot them in the kneecaps. Like, both yeah, of them, so they just hobble around forever. I really thought, it, I thought, like, at that whole tense moment, I really thought they were going to do some bullshit with Strand coming out with a gun and shooting him and killing him and then going like let's get out of here you know and that's strange like that. guys like what the fuck is the deal is he supposed to be like uh i guess he's kind of like ambiguous if he's good or bad <laughs> right but, like he is a little confusing like he just like he still basically li- killed a whole bunch of people for no reason like indirectly he's still a little too dracula for me he's like really theatrical as a character and it's yeah. weird because, like, on the IMDb, they have him credited for six episodes, but I've only remembered him for, like, the last three episodes. So it's very strange. Yeah, me too. I only remember him when it opens up where he's, like, being mean to the dad. Yeah, like, right. Or whatever. Um, do you think that guy I'm got back to I'm going to have to, like, rewatch it and see if he was, like, in other one. He might be. Like, I don't know. I guess because, I mean, we, we've only seen him in that gated, like, area that they were in, so I don't understand. Um, Exner yeah. is there. Exner seems defeated, and she's sitting there with the... Uh, the people on the the hospital beds and stuff like that. I think she might come back because we don't I, like like every show when you don't see the character well, die they'll killed. come back. Wait, oh, oh, the doctor. Oh, not Exner, yeah. Ortiz is the one who dies at the end, which I actually yeah. felt bad for. I felt bad for Lisa Ortiz, but I knew as soon as she gave her I son did, a hug. But I really don't like her character, so I'm glad she died. <laughs> well, I mean, she wasn't really. I mean, I didn't I didn't dislike her and I didn't like her, so I didn't really know anything about her. Really, she didn't seem like she, she was out there I helping think, people. I think that the Chris kid, the son. Is like, it seems almost as if she's the real mom and Travis is the real dad, and he takes after her more than Travis. <laughs> like, for real. Like, he has the same obnoxious thing about him that I don't like about her. Really, yeah? Uh, yeah, least... like, they did a good casting with that. Like, you know, well, she, he was they ra- both have, like, this annoying quality that I don't know how to put in the words, and I just don't like it. I don't know how long ago they got divorced from each other. I assumed, I, I don't know, it seemed recent, I guess, the divorce. I'm not sure, but, um, 
obviously oh. she was raising the kid, and and well, the son he I, it didn't seem like he was and then like. They had, they had a of the Walking Dead, Talking Dead, which I, I didn't uh, watch that. I'm gonna watch that. I, I kind of vaguely paid attention, but Travis in real life has like a he's from like New Zealand, I think, or something. Yeah, but he has like that. a very heavy accent. So like, oh, does he? It was like, he oh, I Paul. Not sound American at all. Yeah, I saw. It's really funny. I saw him, and it's always like jarring, right? I guess because when I saw yeah. when I first heard Rick, um, Rick is the weirdest though. Yeah, like, <laughs> when I first heard him talk like this proper accent. When I first heard Andrew Lincoln talk, because he plays Rick, he was like, "Oh yes, I think that I was." I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like I, that was the first like, besides he's Chris. He's like a British gentleman. Yeah, yeah. right. He's like, hey, "Excuse me, sir." It was like uh like the same thing happened with Christian Bale. When I first heard him talk, I was like, "This ain't right." Was he doing playing a character or something? Wait, he's, he's like, not. He's uh, no. He's he's a uh, he's um Welsh. He has an English accent. I don't know if I knew that, actually. <laughs> it was so funny, because they're like, if you watch the American Psycho behind-the-scenes footage, like, they interview him, he's still talking with an American accent. I guess he does that so he doesn't lose it. But it's yeah. very jarring, so, yeah. Tra- it's just weird, like, why, what is our country's obsession with, like, hiring not English actors? people to have accents? Like, I would rather hear accents. I like accents better than I like no accent. I, or, well, no, American I understand. Accent. I understand, but for for a character, I guess from the south, they might just want to keep it more local. Yeah, sure, I get it. Then maybe I mean Rick is perfect, so I understand like mm, why they're not going to cast somebody else just because he doesn't. Have, but it's just he is it is perfect. bizarre where there's like every character is like American, and then they are actually British. Like, you if know, it's not relevant. Why make them change it? You know, if they had a guy with an English accent in that show as the main character, it'd be some guy in uh, 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 fucking the South going, what the hell am I watching? The goddamn <laughs> Queen of England. You know, some pissed off like that. Socialism. <laughs> Get that goddamn Bernie Sanders bullshit out of here. Ooh, Immigration. Anyway. <laughs> I, like your, I like your accent. That's pretty funny. Anyway. Immigration. <laughs> It doesn't sound human. <laughs> it sounds like something like a demon's coming out. So there's also Ophelia Salazar, who's the daughter. She's sort of a non-entity in this uh, episode. She sort of floats around until she gets shot. Uh, she's fainting. She's feeling sad. There's also Alicia bonding with Chris. Um, Chris hasn't is not this not annoying this episode. So he's he is fun. nearly he's not... as annoying. They was that a little though. Honestly, I thought that they were gonna kind of end it on a. Holy shit! They kidnapped, you know, uh, Alicia, and she's like being fucking held hostage by these soldiers, or like something like that, you know. These like, shows really make you pissed off at army people and shows. There's not really like nice army yeah. guys. They always like turn into like mongrels or something, like rapists and crazy people. Which I don't yeah, know. It's I, pretty universal too. It's not just American. It's just like yeah, it's just any, everything. I any think it's army anywhere. Like that's kind and of. Believe me, I believe me. No, and and I'm sure there are fucking monsters out there that you know in all types of armies, and I'm sure there's good guys too. Because you got to think about the guys in France. Because if this was oh, like totally good guys. Because if this probably was like more good guys than bad guys. You would hope say, so. Yeah. You you would hope like I bet you if they if like these directors of this they'd make you know how recently in France when that guy tried to I guess shoot up the train and the Amer- and the um military guys kicked his ass they'd probably oh, okay. if these guys wrote it they probably have the military guys help him shoot up the train and shit <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that's just kind of how hollywood does it with army guys you're, it's always like uh they have because they have guns they're like automatically bad guys which right. is uh, listen i'm not a, like a pro-gun hey, anti-gun Picasso guy. was making fucking paintings about like the evil spanish army and shit so that was you know a totally different country a totally different time period yeah it's trust me universal if we if we all fought wars with our our paintbrushes, we'd all be dead by now. Believe me, <laughs> there's us. There's, well, there's, if, there's... if we had atom bombs that drop paint instead of explosions, <laughs> that would be good. And I bet you, you could sell that painting more than anything that I actually drew and took time on. Uh, right. So anyway, uh, yeah. So Alicia's getting um, friendly with Nick. I'm, I'm sorry, with uh, Chris. Nick is stuck with Strand inside the gated little area. It's kind of fucked up. They didn't help anybody else out, but that's Strand's kind of doing. Uh, yeah. Strand sort of uh, fucks well, over. That's why I think he's a bad guy, kind of. Strand was fucking over that army guy that I guess was supposed to be his ticket out of there, like his drive out of there. He just like is unnecessarily a dick to him. I don't yeah, know he's why. gonna fuck over them too. That's going to happen. I mean, like, I really don't trust a guy like that. I really don't understand what Strand's hold is over people. I mean, he sounds like a smooth talker, but if I was to speak to that guy, I would not trust him with anything because he just. 
he's literally like a bad guy from a Disney movie. The way he talks, like the way he yeah. moves and he looks and he talks, he just looks like he's gonna break. Like I said last week, he's gonna break into song, and I don't really trust him. And in let, uh, trust me, when he was like, uh, what was he it? Will, that is gonna happen in season two. Of course, he's gonna do something he's to gonna, fuck them over. He's gonna he's gonna throw all the men overboard and fuck all the white wives, and he's gonna be like, oh, like right. that and shit. <laughs> it's gonna be you, the. You're on Strands World now. <laughs> He's like, he, he takes the sticker off the side of the boat and it says it's called the BBC Express and he just fucks every girl in there. It's going to be great. You, you know what sucks for him is that, like, that actor in real life but like, sound like an evil villain and, you know, like, Scar or something. Like, <laughs> he just he just naturally sounds that way and people probably don't trust him. They're probably scared of him and shit like that. Yeah, that's probably how he got the job when he auditioned. People were like, this guy's going to kill us if we don't. <laughs> There's all these scared white people and shit. But uh, he does point out that he's like, I'm looking for Abigail. And for a second, I was thinking of that fantastic King Diamond song, Abigail. Remember that uh, fantastic singer, Danny, that I, I do showed not, you? I do not know it. Remember the singer, the, the singer? No, I, I know, I know. Ooh, King, that yeah, guy. Know it's the, the greatest yeah. song ever. King Diamond, Abigail. Just look it up. It's it, You'll laugh until uh, you shit your pants. But uh, he's okay. looking for Abigail. And Abigail is a boat. Which is probably the worst special effect I've seen on TV in a long time. Because uh, a Strand looks through a pair of binoculars and he shows Nick um, to look through. And it's like the horrendous, like, f- uh, it looks like they cut out an image of a, of a boat. And then they digitally put it on top of water. And I was like, what's going on here? Like, what happened? Um, right. I, I did like that they referenced the first Walking Dead. You know how that, that, that shot... That- I think I'm guessing it is because remember that shot when Rick was on the horse and he was going down the highway and it was empty. They kind of did that with their them driving down that empty highway. I'm I'm, oh, okay. I'm assuming because it was like the same sh- exact shot, the overhead no, you're shot. You're probably right then. I didn't catch that. But. I thought they were gonna do more of a reference, like because I noticed the <laughs> like for some reason, you know, at the very end when Travis is like crying on the beach because he had to shoot um uh what's her name Lisa in the face or in the forehead that uh, like. The, the camera did this really great pan, uh, shot over the water and it just kept going over the water. I, for some reason, I thought it was going to go all the way to where the where Rick Grimes was. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, really, it's pretty, pretty pointless to show like Rick in bed in this episode. But um, You know what I like the idea of? But, like, I understand why they wouldn't do it. But, you know, if you shoot someone in the head, like, close range, like, their head's probably going to, like, explode outwards and shit. Like, and... I just thought it'd be funny if, like, you just see them all, like, and the dead body is just so grotesque of the mom, like, <laughs> her face it's just like apart. her head's, like, exploded into fragments, there's, like, bits of brain, like, all over. Yeah, and there's, it's just falling over her, her like, uh, scrubs on the back of it, just, like, and pieces the, and of meat. And his son's just, like, holding it, and it's, like, disintegrating in his hands as he's holding her. And there's no way that the, there's no way that they can hide that it was, like, uh, it was, because she said make it look like a suicide, but he shot her right in her forehead. Like, that's pretty hard to shoot yourself in the forehead very nicely like that. Yeah. But I guess, I guess you don't really want to feel like a gun inside of your mouth, like, shooting upwards, like, out of well, your brain. Well, why can't you go to the side, the temple or something? Yeah, I know, I guess tra- Travis... I said, you're gonna fucking die the second you pull the trigger, so... Yeah, yeah, she didn't want, she well. had no, no guts Although to I do know, it. Although I know, actually, I don't want to talk about it, never mind. <laughs> okay, something personal. Uh, can't, Madison, yeah, Madison Clark, um, uh, very good in this, uh, she's slowly, for some reason, she keeps reminding me of, um... Uh, oh god, Sarah Crom- Sarah no Sarah Connor for some reason like you know that sort of masculine woman that she'll yeah, still yeah, kick yeah. the shit. Kick ass. Tough woman, yeah. <laughs> and I like her character. She sort of is the Andrea bef- of the comic at- in the show. Um, Nick was sort of useless until uh, he helps kill a zombie that was attacking um, Madison at the end. Well, Nick's got his shit together now. You yeah. can tell. He owns up to his mistake at the end. I think it was because last week when his mom slapped the shit out of him, and he for, he kind of like understood why she sold him out to the or she let him go with the army and stuff like that. Um, yeah. What are what other things that spoke to you in this episode? Spoke to you. What other things you thought were good in this episode? Well, I mean, I, I thought I I liked it all. I just wish they would have like, you know, maybe done something a little more risky. Like it was kind of a safe ending. What do you mean like how like, characters dying like, or? Yeah, like, realistically, like, those fucking soldiers would not have let those kids go. They probably would have fucking, would've. like, kidnapped and raped Alicia and probably killed Chris, like... Well, maybe your army would do that, Danny, but, uh, no, I'm just kidding. 
Um, <laughs> no, but I'm saying, like, at the very least, like, I feel like there should have been maybe, like, another character dying. I'm glad they didn't kill Travis and that he kind of, like, manned up, so now he's going to survive because I thought he was going to die because he's, like, weak, but he, like, turned around this episode. But, like, somebody should have died. They killed, like, uh, Lisa or whatever her name is, but like she's like not even a character, like she's not that important really. So, I mean, I yeah, that, that was sort of a safe death for them. And uh, the funny thing about Strand, when you go on IMDb, like, and I first looked at the the um, you know when the first the show first started, and it was like I was looking at Strand. Strand looks exactly like uh, this guy from The Wire, and I was like, what's the guy from The Wire doing here? So when I didn't see him show up in the show, I'm like, what the fuck? And I guess that made me racist. But uh, oh, shit. No, he's... people could look like each other. <laughs> but uh, he looked. Oh, he looked like uh, this actor named Wood Harris, and it's very disturbing because if you look at his IMD photo from from the really it's small. Woody Harrelson's doppelganger. <laughs> yes, <laughs> his uh, his Star Trek negative zone version, I guess. Um, but he looks like Avon Barksdale, like on his IMD. But then when you look at him close up, you're like, oh, he looks like an English actor or some shit like that. But uh, which wouldn't surprise me. But um. Yeah, I I I, uh, I enjoy the show. I'm still sort of like Ugh, with Strand's character. He's a little bit too. Uh, what is he anyway? Because this house is fucking. Ba- that house is fantastic. Well, he's like a man. millionaire or something. I th- was he like? Because uh, he was talking about flipping, um, um, gentrifying no- uh, locations. So I guess he. So he's probably like a land developer. <clears throat> probably yeah. And... In Los Angeles, which is a big deal, you know. That is a beautiful house. I hope the whole. I I gotta wonder if the next season is gonna just take place on that boat i don't think the whole season but i mean what more they'll can be you on really it for do? a while i'm sure but you know like <coughs> it's gonna be a lot of talking on that boat have to like get food or something if there's no fish to be found so <laughs> oh, <laughs> who knows God. maybe they'll get attacked by like a army sub or something <laughs> the it's fucking, possible the, su- the submarine uh, beaches and it, the boat's on top of it and that's the rest of the season they're like how do we get off this boat and you just hear clown music and shit for the ne- rest of the episodes you know what's funny i'm looking on imdb right now uh and the first thing i see is a world where everyone is stupid and it's a one star rating <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Yeah, well, I guess they must have seen the last week's episode. I mean, that's like every horror movie <laughs> or anything ever, so I don't hold that against them. And I guess They're I not ha- stupid. They're actually fine. I guess we had missed it, but Daniel Salazar was, I guess, on the bad side of that war in El Salvador with his kids. Because <laughs> I guess the, the daughter's upset at her dad because I guess he was one of those... Uh, uh, I forget what the word is for those mo- military guys that just slash and burn everybody and kick their asses because... Well, I don't know if he was... The necessarily a bad guy or if he was just a bad guy for the good guys you know oh okay cause yeah the daughter was like I guess it's uh I guess it depends on which like side you're like on like a torture or like guy like to get information and shit yeah so the daughter was like pissing him about that but um I mean uh, this episode is certainly a step up this is probably what I expected more from the show and I guess yeah. I mean cause well, I, was... I mean they had to work up to it they're not gonna like you can't just have that like they started out <laughs> the first episode as a normal world so it makes sense. Very good. Uh, <laughs> so with that I would give this episode a, a seven out of ten. Actually, I would give it an eight. This is a this is a good episode. It's a good episode to go out on. Um, it suffered from the rest of the fucking season, which was hit or miss. Uh, mostly miss for me. Uh, what did you think mostly of well, the what, season? Seven out of ten. What? What's your? Seven? I'm gonna get to it. I'm just asking you a goddamn question. Go ahead. I. You want me to rate it? Or you no, to I'm asking you. Season. Or miss. I think that overall, there was like one episode that was kind of missed, which was the one before this, but okay. otherwise I liked it. So I'd give this an 8 out of 10. Um, walking out with your new best dressed friend and ignoring the hot chick in the gate by not giving her a key. Okay. I'm going to give this... Um... Hmm. I'm going to give this... Boy, that uh... was good, huh? Maybe I shouldn't have asked you that question. 9 out of 10, looking hopefully into a giant pile of cremated bodies for your mother's dead body. Oof. That was some scary shit. Uh, So with that, Danny, uh, what's the final word? You are 2-CBL-CV04. The (laughs) 4